Okay, here's a video for the homework problem that is uh, in fluid mechanics. Um, it's going to be homework number four and the first problem, which is worth 20 points. And I got it out of um, this book right here. Let's see, we'll pan out a little bit, maybe. I don't, I don't, know. I don't know. I think I have a do I have the page mark. Oh, here. Put a pencil in there. So um, this is a Shams Outlines book. If you're not familiar with Shams Outlines, um, they're... A uh, pretty handy thing. There's for tons of different um, subjects. Uh, this is in uh, 2,500 problems. Um, there's other ones. Uh, there's also a um, one called Fluid Mechanics uh, by Hughes. And there's another one here, um, slightly different. That's called uh, Fluid Mechanics and Hydraulics. This is by the same guy, uh, Everett, as... Uh, made this book right here. It's a pretty pretty good buy. And um, this, let's see, I'm trying to put this thing back away. Notably that you can actually, if you're on the University of Hartford network, you can uh, actually go to, I believe you don't even have to, uh, you don't even have to have an account, but uh, I think it's Access Engineering, am I gonna spell this wrong? Access Engineering, okay. So Access Engineering, which is owned by McGraw-Hill. And if you just go into here and you go like Fluid Mechanics, Fluid Mechanics, and you're gonna see not this edition. Let's see, let's give me a search, hit search. It's thinking, why going so slow? But anyway, there you go, Shams Outlines right there. Um, this is not the same book as the one that I'm getting this problem out of. This one, the, the, this particular book is actually, I kind of like it a little bit more. But this is going to be an auxiliary resource that you might uh, like. And notice there's other books in here. Um, but if you were to go to this and uh, go down, you might see, let's see, Fundamental Fluid Flow, maybe that's right there. Steady Flow, so we might go to Streamlines in here. And you can see that we have... Uh, some little basic stuff, you know, some things that we've, we've already looked at. But if you go even further, you can see that we have solved problems, right? So there's uh, uh, more problems for you to see. And sometimes professors get use the uh, stuff out of these books. Um, I just still didn't find ones that I really liked out of this uh, that were going to be as applicable as the one we're going to use right now. So uh, without further ado, here's the problem I decided to pick. We have a two-dimensional steady um, velocity field um, given by u is equal to 3x squared minus 2y squared, and then v is equal to negative 6xy. That's the one I did. Good. Huh. And then we want to derive the streamline pattern and sketch a few streamlines in the upper uh, half plane. And this is what it's supposed to look like right here. So, but we're going to work through the problem and do all the other stuff that I have been, that I've asked you to do in your homework, which is to uh, determine the acceleration field, find uh, the general equation for the streamlines, and determine if there are any stagnation points and where they are, if so. Uh, determine if this field is rotational or irrotational, and determine if this field obeys compre uh, compressible continuity. And then I want you to do the MATLAB stuff. So. Uh, that's what we're gonna. That's what we're gonna do. So uh, I'm going to move this down. Let's see. Get a nice big picture in there. Is that too close? Yeah, maybe. Can maybe fast forward through all this happiness. There we go. All right. So I'm gonna write down um, the problem, and this is uh, problem six, seven, six. And so for posterity, and I put my name and what year it is, F22 or semester. And then this is ME 340, and this is homework uh, four. Yeah, homework four. Maybe I'm going to call this the problem one. No, no, I'm not. No, because this is not our homework problem. No, it's not our homework problem. That makes sense, yeah. So I'll stick with the 769 uh, from uh, Shams. 2,500 problems. Okay. Okay. 
this type of record keeping is really important as an engineer, I gotta tell you. So even though I might seem like I'm just being very picky about things, I've definitely been very grateful when I uh, made sure that I kept good documentation on things. So uh, I'll write it out here as a general thing, just to remind ourselves that this is a velocity field and that this is what it's being described. But then I'll rewrite the thing out just because, jeez, uh, I'm talking and writing at the same time. All right, so uh, when I say negative 6xyj, and they didn't give us any units, so it's, we're, we're really just trying to visualize the thing. It doesn't matter what the actual values are going to be. Um, so I'll write out my u is equal to uh, 3x squared minus 2y squared, and then my v is equal to negative 6xy. And I'll start down the list as I had them. Let's see, I'll bring my list over to the side. I want to get the acceleration uh, first. So acceleration. Now, when you look up in the equation in the book, uh, you'll have uh, this guy, remember him, I'm only going to do it for two dimensions. It's a two-dimensional thing, so I don't need to do the rest of it. But we'll have, remember, the partial derivative with respect to time. That was the local. And then we have u times uh, del v del x plus v times del v del y. And if you broke it down into components, separated these things out, and first of all, we know that that's going to be uh, zero. So we'll just leave it out. And this becomes simply um, u times del u del x plus v times del u del y. And I'll make use of the paper here a little bit more. This will be u times del v del x plus uh, v times del v del y. And I'll double check myself that I got these right because it's really easy to mix them up as you saw me do in class a couple times. Uh, I kind of wish I had actually put this underneath there but because this one is kind of long. But it's pretty easy to do and we don't have to do a whole lot of algebra with this. So let me start over here. Here's the uh, acceleration in x. I'm going to take u, 3x squared minus 2y squared. Um, and times de, uh, del u del x, right? So I'm going to take the uh, partial differential uh, with uh, respect to x right here, and we're just going to get 6x. Did I do that right? I'm just double-checking myself as I go through. Uh, sure, somewhere. There you go. Yep. And then um, plus uh, v, which is negative 6xy, times del u del y right here. So that's going to be... Uh, negative 4y. So there you go. You could, you know, work this out and gather terms, but this is good enough. We don't really, I mean, there might be some benefit to doing that, but we're going to put it into a uh, MATLAB anyway, so what, what do we care? And then um, we'll do, a, once again, we have u, so it's still 3x squared, and then minus 2y squared, and now we have dv dx. So we go up to v, we see that's just going to be a negative 6y. And then uh, we'll put v, negative 6xy. And now we go dv dy. So that's going to be uh, negative 6x, right? Great. Um, not a big deal. And what we're really doing this mostly so that we could... Put it, we could plot it, we could kind of visualize it. So we're going to make little quivers in MATLAB to be able to represent that. All right, so that was our acceleration. What's the next thing I said? We want to find the general equation, so for the streamlines. Now, I had to relearn how to do this. I totally forgot about uh, using multivariable calculus things. I mean, I guess I kind of knew the I, I knew the ideas, but not the execution there. So... Uh, what we want to do for streamlines, remember, we're going to take a dy, the slope of a streamline, can be defined by the ratio of the components. 
And so, you know, we could, you know, diagonally multiply this right here and then mo move it on to the other side. So what we're really saying is u dy minus v dx is equal to zero. So we can uh, fill that in. So take the u 3x squared minus 2y squared dy minus uh, negative xy. So I might as well make that positive right there, and I will in a second. And that's equal to 0. And then we can integral, integrate these. Well, um, one thing we note that we have x's over here, and we're not quite sure what to do with them. Well, just like in partial uh, differentiation, what you want to do is uh, only use the stuff that, uh, that actually matters, right? So pretend like x is just a constant, and but then we're going to add in a constant of integration that is a function of the one that we're not using. So here we're going to have a function of x that we're going to add to this, and over here we're going to have a function of y that we're going to add to it. I like to separate these out instead of write, keep writing as they were right here for one part because we're going to see there's some we're going to look for redundancies and we're only going to count that once right because you're thinking about this is what we're doing is we're integrating what we had presumably at one time taking a, a partial differential equation onto the thing so um i'll write this first part right here and i'm not quite sure what the symbols i want to put here i'll just write it down here um so we're gonna have three x uh squared y Right? And then minus uh, two thirds y cubed. And then add in f1 of x. Right, So that would be like a constant. Uh, not a constant, but a function that might be in there. Um, I guess I'll continue moving along right here. But we just want to be careful that we don't just add these two things together. Because I made that mistake, so don't worry about that. All right, so now we're going to go um, plus, because we got rid of that minus right there. And we're going to have 6. Um, okay, so this is going to be a square right here. So we're going to have 3x squared uh, uh, y, right? Because we divided this by 2 because we made that squared. And then plus a function of y. But over here, these are the function of y. And this right here is the function of x, so we don't need anything additionally, but we do need a constant. And that's going to be equal to zero. So we already have this in here, so we don't have to include that. And these are kind of taken care of. So the, the equation, the general equation that we have uh, that represents our streamlines is 3x squared y uh, minus 2 thirds y cubed plus c equals zero. And these are a family of streamlines, right? So we could choose various things for this constant and that'll determine what the actual curves are going to be. So we got that done. The next is we want to uh, determine if this field is rotational or irrotational. So I'll just write rotational. And the condition for rota irrotationality is that the, um, the, the curl has to equal zero curl of this thing. Um, so we use the little zeta guy and that in two dimensions is relatively simple. It's just dv dx partials, right? Um, minus del u del y. But remember this was a cross product with the, uh, the nabla operator right here. If this thing equals zero, that's going to be irrotational. So uh, we could do that right here over to the side. No big deal. Um, the partial differential of V with respect to X here is just going to be a negative 6Y. And now we're going to subtract out. And now the partial of U with respect to Y is going to be a negative 4 y squared. No, not y squared. No, negative 4. Y. Yeah, yeah, because it's driving that down. I misspoke. Um, can't do math very well, but right here, um, 
It is, uh, uh, you know, maybe maybe the question should be, is it r rotational or irrotational? I guess it's rotational. Ro rotational. And really what that means, and really why the reason we're checking is there's going to be some calculations that uh, aren't possible to do unless it's irrotational, right? So this is not a candidate to be, uh, to be solved using uh, those methods uh, that, could, that could be simplified by being irrotational because that's, that's a nice uh, tri 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 uh, 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 thing to have. Yeah, okay. So the next is going to be uh, continuity. Uh, I should say incompressible continuity. Incompressible. We want to check for it. And that's the divergent, right? So uh, if you recall, uh, this, this one was the curl of the vector, uh, of the velocity vector. This is the divergent of the velocity vector. And we will prove this, by the way, so, uh, down the line, right? We'll see why this is true. But just right now, we're just doing kinematics. So we're looking at the things that we could find out from this velocity field. So even though we're jumping the gun a little bit with the incompressible continuity, this is a conservation of mass and uh, incompressible combined together. But we see if we have, take the partial derivative, boy, doesn't it look a little bit like this, but it, of course we flip-flop them, right? So this is u and x, right? And then v and y, and there's plus, right? So there's the big difference uh, that's going on right there. Um, so if we take the partial derivative of u with respect to x, we're just gonna get six x. And then we're going to add in, if we take the partial derivative of v with respect to y, right here, we're, going to, we're just going to get 6x, right? Negative 6x. Well, looking at that right there, they do cancel each other out. And yes, uh, it matches. It's, it, it, this is a field that can be used and considered incompressible. Incompressible. Uh, and uh, continuous, I guess, <laughs> continuous. I don't think they mean that, continuous, but anyway. So we passed that right there. Um, I think the last thing we want to check is, oh, I think I jumped one. I jumped one, didn't I? Stagnation. Are there any stagnation points? Well, that is checked by uh, seeing, is there any spot, is there a point where the velocity, the magnitude, is going to be zero, right, of u squared and v squared. Well, they can't cancel each other out, so each individual one has to be zero. So we could set u equal to zero, 3x squared minus 2y squared equals zero. And let's look at the other equation. We have negative 6xy equals zero. Well, the only way that this one right here can be zero is at the origin, right? No, um, that's not necessarily true. Let me think about that. Um, one or the other, either x or y has to be equal to zero, right? So, um, so it doesn't matter which one. So we, we could go back onto this other spot right here and we can look and see, well, in what case can this equal to zero? So we could have 3x squared is equal to 2y squared. So I, 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 didn't, I didn't notice that until just now. I was like, hmm, that's possible. So is there any other way to make that zero? No, it's really. I think the only way this can happen um, is, uh, uh, yeah, there's no way to other, other way to make it, make it equal to zero. No, I don't think that's possible. Well, let me think about it again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess so, right? If um, we said that, uh, uh, make this two thirds and take the square root of both sides. Uh, I'm, I'm confusing myself right now. I'm trying to think. Can we make that uh, equal? Let's see if. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. I think we could do that. If we say that, um, I guess we'll go over here, 1.5x squared um, is equal to 
y squared and take the square root of those right here. And what do we get? So I'm going to check it. We, we, may, we might be able to check this to see if uh, I'm all right here. I'm almost certain that I'm confused, but that's okay. So we, if we get 1.2245, uh, right here, and no, nah, it can't be done. It can't be done because one of them has to be zero for this one to be, uh, uh, for it to be done. So that's my, that's my conclusion. I'm going to check with somebody else because it wasn't in the book. I don't know for sure right there, but I'm 99% I'm sure that the only stagnation is at zero, zero because both of these have to be zero. And no matter what you do right here, at least one of them has to be zero uh, uh, right there. So therefore, they both have to be zero. Yeah, that's easy enough. I, I, I was confusing myself. All right, so I think we did everything we could, um, and that's like a longer than you needed for 20 minutes. Let's do the MATLAB thing. Maybe we will, uh, maybe this will be a really long video, but it's here to help you, so I guess you just have to deal with it. All right, so um, I started with a fresh MATLAB uh, thing, in case you totally forgot everything that you ever knew about MATLAB. Here is an M file. It's a good idea to uh, document these things and name, name them what they are. Uh, F22, ME340, homework four, uh, problem one, and uh, we'll say, I'll say where I got it from. Uh, from Shams2500, uh, problems in fluid mechanics. I should probably put the author's name, but I'll do that later when I, once I solve it. But anyway, um, so the, the here, here's here's the, the gist of the problem because you're gonna pr might want to um, find this like use this later on. So uh, I guess I'll just write it out right here. But it, it's better to have a much more than you need than to have not enough and then not to know what you want. So now I'm gonna actually as I'm writing this out right here, I might as well actually write it out um, the way in MATLAB speak, right? So I could just copy and paste this onto the thing. Uh, so and I need to go, I need to go dot. Remember, I need to do dots in this um, because we're going to, we're going to create a field and we want to get the individual fields of the, uh, uh, of it, within the matrices in the individual cells uh, to have these things done to them. And so V is equal to negative six times X dot times Y right there. Okay, so that's the thing we're gonna do. Um, so we're gonna start off with, um, it's always a good idea to, to clear everything out. Uh, I like to do, um, I, I decided to go with spacing is what I decided to name like uh, my increments and you can use anything you want. I decided to use 0.1, but you could change it later on and monkey around with it. I also decided to establish what my limits were going to be. I chose start out with two. Once again, you could change that and then you can make it more fine or more coarse. Now here we're going to uh, create a matrix that's X and Y. I don't have to put the space in there. I guess I could leave it in there. Yeah, I put, sorry, I put the brackets and I go mesh grid and I'm going to go from negative limb by way of spacing to limb and then I'm going to do it again but I'm extremely lazy so I'm going to copy it and just do it again there's probably by the way there's probably shortcuts that you know that I don't make sure you always end with a semicolon and then we can write out we could copy these two things and put them in there so I'm to be lazy and make these into different lines and make sure I put my semicolon and I might want to check at this point make sure I wrote these down the right way because everything will get messed up from here um I like to uh like put in my right now my I'll put my acceleration in as um okay so well I decided to you know I'm, I'm going to write it out like this and times uh, I might do a dot times dot times and then I'm also going to add 
and then I'll do a dot times narrative. So I'm just going to copy this, put that in there, and then I'm going to copy this and put it in here. And now, nope, 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 wrong spot. Let me go undo. Right here, put it right in there. Uh, is that what I did? I think so. And then in over here, all I need to do is go six times x. And over here, all I needed to do was go negative four times y. And everything should work out fine. Yeah, I think so. Um, I'll do the same thing. And maybe this is how lazy I really am. I'll just, I, I don't even want to type all that stuff anymore. Uh, I'm incredibly lazy. I'll just replace that y. Um, we're going to get rid of this. And we're going to get rid of that, right? So we didn't even have to copy and paste. That's how lazy we are. And so this is going to be, oh, actually, I could, I could have kept some of that, negative 6 times y. And then I can have a uh, negative 6 times x. All right. And... Now I want to do so. I just learned how to do this, but I kind of like it. So I'm going to put in my streamlines. I'm going to uh, put that equation in there. And wait, I have, did I do my, yeah, yeah, I did my streamlines. Okay, good, good. Okay. I just all of a sudden I think, did I even do that already? I'm going to set name, name my constants. I might name a zero constant first. I like to put spaces in places. And we're going to use the at sign. So we're defining that we have variables. I'm going to go xx because I don't want to use the other the variables I've created. I want to have like something I'm going to superimpose uh, these streamlines on top of. And after I've made that de declaration, now I can just start typing a function. And this is going to be the, the function for a streamline. I'm just going to go three times... Uh, I don't need the dot there. No, I do that need uh, uh, xx. Yeah, three times x, xx. Uh, and I'm going to raise it to the square, right? Because that, that was the equation that we just had um, for our streamlines. Remember, so we're, we're going to put this guy back in here, and he needs to be squared. So we'll put this back down there. And then um, I think it needs to be time uh, dot times. Yeah, dot times. I'm going to call it yy. And then I done right there, so minus, and then I'm gonna go two divided by three times. Uh, I don't need a dot when it comes to constants. Y y dot, and I'm raising it. Is that true? Raising it to the third, sure. And now I could put in a constant, uh, but I'm gonna put in plus zero as a spaceholder uh, because I want to make a lot more of these. Right, so that was that's going to be my first curve, be zero, and I'm going to put in a bunch of others. What did I say? Like six? Yeah. Oh, let's go. Let's go with seven. There you go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go name them one. You could name them anything you want. Two, uh, three, and then I'll go underscore one. So that's going to be my negative. That's what I'm going to. I'm, I'm going to call that one negative. Uh, two, underscore two, and then underscore three. And then over here on the top, I'm going to go one, two, three, and then I'm going to go, I'm gonna go negative one, negative two, negative three. All right, and I'm hoping I don't mess anything up along the way. All right, so now we have, we're ready to plot these things out. Uh, figure, I like to go figure one in here. You don't have to do that, but I, I like to just update the figure as opposed to making a bunch. And we're going to use the quiver uh, thing where now we're going to have X, Y, U, and V. And I decided I'm going to write on top of it, so I'm going to put the hold on. And I'm going to define my limits. So my X limb is going to be uh, um, bracket and I think I want negative limb and then limb 
And if you're extremely lazy, you will go and I guess we'll go comma and do the same thing with Y. All right, and I'll just give myself space. I'm gonna go quiver again, X comma, Y comma, AX. It's actually guessing what I want. Isn't that nice? AY. Oh, look at that, that was this little artificial intelligence thing or something, I don't know. Anyway, there's my, um, so I'm superimposing that. And then here's one that I just learned how to do. F-I-M-P-L-I-C-T. If you do that, boom. Oops, I didn't mean to go. All right. Now I bet there's a I bet there's a shortcut where I could do all of these somehow. But I decided just to go boom, just be lazy. I guess it's a form of being lazy. Uh, where I go, one, two, three, and then I guess I have too many of them, right? Underscore one, underscore two, underscore, where's underscore? Underscore three. All right, so I can get rid of this one. And I decided, uh, here I have my grid on. You don't have to turn the grid on. Maybe it might help. And then I'll turn the hold off. And let's see, we should name this thing. So let's just name it something. And um, I'll say that I think I already named it every, this right here. I'm gonna call, name it that and call it demo. What, underscores. Let's run it, and there you go. That's what she looks like. And we can zoom in a little bit. You can see that the uh, the blue arrows are the velocities, and the red arrows are the accelerations uh, right in here. And um, one of the, uh, in the book, or the, the, the example that we got, um, it would be nice to control this and make it uh, um, make it look just like the, the, the book, I guess. So we, we uh, could get rid of the limit and make it the, the Y limit and start from zero right there. And look at it again. So right there, that's the, uh, the look of the thing. We tried to probably would we could try to work to make it symmetric, right? So that this one by one right here would be a square. So you can actually get the sense because in the book you might notice they actually came up with an, an angle. I'm not sure uh, how they decided uh, they, to get that angle, but they got that angle. So that's what they have in the book. And you can kind of see the direction of the flows uh, coming down, coming this way, and flowing around there, and coming that. And I don't know, maybe they're spraying something into a corner or something along those lines, or maybe there's a baffle something that's causing uh, this type of flow pattern uh, to take place. Um, and use your imagination as to what that, that kind of thing might be. So I think that's long enough at 33 minutes. Hopefully this won't make it a really, really long assignment. I said to give them only one problem. It's gonna give you two. You can't really just modify this code once you have it uh, to try to get the thing. Note that we could, you know, of their features we could, uh, you know, good, good, those little data tips and with this not doing it for me right now. I, I guess you have to float, there you go. And we could, we could find, a, oh, there you go, there's the stagnation, but not really exciting too much right here. But we could, we could try to get uh, what those, um, what those velocities were in this field. I think it's pretty cool that you, uh, you know, we're, we're able to visualize the thing. Um, we said to plot it. Well, I guess we didn't have to. We could probably use earlier versions of, uh, of MATLAB, but, uh, yeah. So hopefully this will be a not too painful assignment uh, that will leave maybe a somewhat of an impression of uh, fluid kinematics. And I am going to go eat some dinner.